Yeah, nice one. Well, thank you for tuning in to, uh, to my hotel room in Sydney. I know it's not the most ideal place to be speaking from, but um, yeah, if there's any issues with the sound or whatever, just wave at me and I'll, um, I'll stop and re-say something or we'll try and fix the problem. Um, yeah, uh, what a blessing it was to see Genevieve and Jensen um, leading out in worship today. Wow. Um, yeah, so good. I was so blessed. So thank you, Genevieve. Thanks, gents. Sounded really good. Um, from here, I actually did some screen recordings of it. So <laughs> just to show mum, because uh, I'll be seeing Cheryl and then in about an hour, um, who's just landed and is probably going through immigration now. Um, yeah, look, I'll keep this brief, but I um, had on my heart really um, a sense of ministering to children, um, of which you are, all of you, yeah? Do you accept that? <laughs> do you accept that you are his little children in fact the apostle John refers to you and me as little children yeah but how quickly we grow up and how quickly we uh, find dislike to even being referred to as children but we're meant to be and so I want to address not just that issue, but um, if we can come to that this morning, even in the hearing of the word, to be childlike, yeah? Not childish, childlike. And, and just trusting, just opening our hearts to him, to his word, and and trusting like you would trust as a little child would trust what has been said, what has been shared, because that's ultimately where we're meant to be with the Lord. That's how we relate to the Lord, yeah. It is that unquestionable trust that is required of this salvation, of our hope, of this life with him. It's the only way you can relate to God, yeah. It's completely falling at his feet, upon his mercy, in complete abandon trust with him. So I'm really speaking to children today, and I'm, I want to address even those um children that have attended today and those who may attend by video later. And I want us adults to get this as well because uh, I'm ministering um, to the whole body, but I, I want to focus on children and those young um, in the room. A, a beautiful psalm and You'll all know it. Psalm 91. He dwells in the shelter of the Most High, will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. You know the one? So if you want to turn there, we'll go to Psalm 91. And it's an interesting psalm. It, it's one of the few psalms that has no author attached to it, which brings to question, you know, wow, this is um, without... Uh, effectively human authorship. So therefore, it, more, it immediately pushes it into the authorship of the divine, of the Lord, of the Spirit. Now, there may well have been an author, there's just none recorded that we know of. There's people that suppose Moses wrote it, people that suppose David wrote it, but there's no given author on that psalm. And for me, that's that does something to me. It, it's something special. It's there's something sweet in that. There's something that's 
without man. This is something I believe from God. And we're going to see this the more we read it. Um, so I want to read the thing all the way through. And I'm not even sure the version that I've got, but um, just follow along with me. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly plague. He will cover you with his feathers under his wings. You will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the calamity that destroys at noon. Though a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, no harm will come near you. You'll only see it with your eyes and witness the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling, my refuge, the Most High, no evil will befall you, no plague will approach your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift up, sorry, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the young lion and serpent. Because he loves me, I will deliver him. Because he knows my name, I will protect him. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That is precious. How do you feel after reading that? What happens to your spirit when you hear that read? There's, there's such beauty in it and such protection. And this is something that as believers, as Christians, as children, we need to take into our hearts. This psalm is has laid out what salvation is for you. This is um, a total picture of Christ. This is a total picture of of his saving grace. It's a beautiful picture of dwelling. He who dwells. I think in the um I can't remember the version. No, that's right. I'll, I won't go there. Um, read a slightly different version of it, but I'll I'll just stick with this one. He dwells in the shelter of the Most High. Will abide. Maybe just circle that word "abide" for a second. How often do we hear that word in the world? Have you ever heard anybody else use it? Abiding. Do you hear that in the workplace? Have you ever heard that in the schoolyard? Abide? <laughs> it's not very common, is it? For me, it's a spiritual word. It's a, it's a living place. It's a place that we remain in him. It's a, a abiding is, is more than dwelling. There's something, there's something deeper about this word. And this is where he would have us free from, from sin, from attack of the enemy. I'll just fast forward a little bit. I felt to quickly go to uh, John, first John chapter three. says whoever abides in him does not sin wow anybody got problems with sin ongoing sin persistent sin comes back to this abiding if we're even if we go back first john chapter 3 verse 5 it says you know he was manifested 
this is speaking of Christ, to take away our sin. And in him there is no sin. Amen? Amen. <laughs> There's no sin in Christ, right? So Psalm 91 is a picture of this. It's if we're in him, you can't sin. Amen? You're abiding in the presence of the Lord. You have no desire. There's no want. There's no ability to sin. You you cannot. You're in his presence. And then you go read on to verse 6. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, here's that phrase again. Let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. So what's the key to living in a condition where sin has no part. I don't know if I can hear because maybe the microphone there is muted, but what's the key to living in a condition where sin has no part? It starts with A. Uh, abiding. 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 Amen. Nice. Oh, sorry, you probably said it, but I couldn't hear you say it. Um, we have a guest this is, on the mic. Sorry. This is key. It's it's abiding. So when we are tempted, where do we go? Well, we've got two choices. We either abide, we either run to Christ, or we continue with our temp temptation, run to self or to sin. So this this Psalm 91 is just it's so beautiful. He who dwells in the shadow of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. There's a shelter, there's a protection, there's a refuge. He is my fortress, my God in whom I trust. This sounds like basic salvation stuff, doesn't it? And it is. It's fundamental. It's foundational. But we can't de ever depart from it because it's a ever eternal present reality of Christ. Amen. It's who he is today. It wasn't something that was written by whether it was Moses or David, whoever wrote it, was definitely inspired um, by the Holy Spirit. But this is a present reality. So let's not move on from these texts because it's often so quick. We're often so quick to move up and away from, from something that is known and familiar. But I want us to come back to this, and especially the young folk um, have this have this chapter, um, chapter 91, embedded in your spirit, know where to go, because this, this will protect you and keep you and guard you and guide you as you walk this life. It's a, it's a beautiful piece of, um, of eternal reality of who Christ is. He's manifesting himself right there on the page. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly plague. He will cover you with his feathers. Here's another precious picture. He will cover you with his feathers. I've often looked at that and gone, what does that mean? Well, think of a little bird, a brand new hatchling doesn't have any feathers, right? It needs its mummy's feathers to cover it and to keep it warm, to protect it. That's who God is. When we're newborn believers, when we're young in the faith, young in the Lord, he provides the warmth. He provides the covering. He provides his feathers. And, and how light is a feather? Anybody held a feather before? It's, it's sweet, it's light, it's gentle. 
it's it's very sweet it's something that um is difficult to explain with words with language but i've sensed that presence of god it's so sweet it's so gentle especially when you're you're a new believer you you come to him and and everything he does is is gentle is covering you with his feathers under his wings you will find refuge another beautiful passage here is just under that his faithfulness is a shield and a rampart what's a rampart Melvin would know this a castle <laughs> It's the castle wall, yeah? It's the superstructure of a defense around a city. It's the high towers around um, a city. He is that to you. He is a shield and a rampart. And it's his faithfulness. Again, it's sent. It's, it's of him. It's from him to you. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the calamity that destroys at noon. So there's no fear. We come back to the very first verse. It comes with this abiding, this dwelling in him. Now, if you've got fear in your life, or you're moving out of peace, it's because you've moved away from him. He hasn't moved. Amen. He is unchanging. He is solid. He is the rock. So when we come into fear, clearly we've departed him. Yeah. True or not? Banar titak banar. True or not? Though a thousand may fall at your side, this is verse 7, and 10,000 at your right hand, no harm will come near you. So this psalm, Psalm 91, is eschatological. This is speaking of great calamity at the end of the age as well. Yes, it's about calamities that have happened in history already calamities that are to come but I believe this is speaking of the final calamity as well not to be if not to be afraid yeah if you're dwelling and abiding in him there's no fear amen there's no fear of the terror of the night night is fast approaching nor the, of the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence these are speaking of the great plagues and the pestilences that are to come. You to have no fear if you're dwelling in him. There is no fear. Amen. Though a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, no harm will come near you. Do you believe that? <laughs> Do you believe this? Remember what I said at the beginning, we have to be childlike. We need to come under his wings, come into his dwelling. We need to abide there. That means remain. And you won't fear. You won't fear this age. You won't fear the world. You won't fear what's to come. It's only when we depart this abiding, we come into fear. No harm will come near you. You will only see it with your eyes. So it's not saying you won't see this stuff. You'll see it, but it won't affect you. You will witness the punishment of the wicked because you have made the Lord your dwelling, my refuge the most high. No evil will befall you. No plague will approach your tent. 
For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Here's a point. He will command the angels. We've heard teachings from various ministries saying you need to go and command your angel. You need to tell your angel to do this and tell your angel to do that. Garbage. He will command his angels concerning you. You won't know what to say to them, yeah? <laughs> it's not your job to speak to them. It's your job to dwell. It's your job to abide. It's your job to trust, yeah? To take refuge in him, to shelter in him, to remain in him. Only he commands angels. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the young lion and the serpent. Now there's a change here in the psalm. Maybe, I don't know if you've got a pen, we can highlight your text. But I want you to put a mark next to verse 14. Has anybody seen the change here? This is now God speaking. Because he loves me, I will deliver him. Because he knows my name, I will protect him. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Whoa, come on. Why is this? This is where the Lord breaks in. It's because you've been the one who would dwell. You've been the one who would abide. Because he is like this, I will be like this, says God. You have been faithful. You have remained in him. Now God can come in. Now, he says, because he loves me, I will deliver him. Because he knows my name, I will protect him. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. So the first part of Psalm 91 is what we do. Yeah? We come into him. We trust him. We dwell with him. The psalmist writes, Because you have made the Lord your dwelling, my refuge, no evil will before you. For he will command his angels. So this is the psalmist looking up to God, trusting in God. But now the Lord breaks in in, in verse 14 here. Is God speaking? I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I tell you, if you can get this stuff, if you can get these basics, if you can get this psalm into your spirit, if you can read this regularly, if you can speak this out over your life, over your family, over your current circumstance and situation, there's power in it. It brings you into this dwelling with him. There's nothing that will anguish the devil more than a believer who lives this and who believes this and takes this psalm to heart. Psalm 50, verse 23. Whoso offereth praise glorifies me and to him that orders his conversation right i will show the salvation of god this is nothing new this psalm 91 is not some magical silver bullet that has just appeared out of nowhere this is who god is eternally long life is given to those who who walk in his ways 
who walk in his word. That's Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 2. Psalm 1611, I will show, that will show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. This is a psalm that we take wherever we go. And I do a fair bit of travel and I'm blessed because the dear Gideons have placed Bibles in most hotels that I, I go to. And I can pull out Psalms, Psalm 91, and just read this. Another really good Psalm is, uh, I believe this is written of David, Psalm 62, verse 8. Trust in him at all times, O people. There you go. Trust in him at all times. See, it's when we move out of trust, it's when we move out of this dwelling, we move into fear, we move into doubt, we move into confusion, condemnation. Like how Psalm 62, verse 5 it's basically the same language as Psalm 91. Rest in God alone, O my soul, for my hope comes from him. How beautiful. Rest in God alone. There's no escape. There's no alternative. There's no out. There's no quick remedy. There's no band-aid. It's straight to rest in God alone. Wow. You can almost read that as a command, can't you? Rest in God alone, O oh my soul, for my hope comes from him. Here the psalmist can even recognize that there's no hope in anything else. Any hope that's of value has to be issued from God. It comes from him alone. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor rest on God, my strong rock. He is my refuge. My refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O oh people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our refuge. So Psalm 62, 8 is the same as Psalm 91, a distilled version. Go back to verse 14. Because he loves me, I will deliver him. Because he knows my name, I will protect him. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. You know there's a call. You have to call out. Do we cry out to him when we're in trouble? Or do we cry out for something else? I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you, Lord. So I want us to take this to heart and come back to the beauty of this psalm and spend some time in it. Read it. Read it to your children. Children, you read it. Yeah. <laughs> Write it out. Pray it. Come back to come back to these fundamentals because these these are the things that are precious. These are the things that are going to keep us when life has fallen apart, when people's lives around us are falling apart, when circumstances are falling apart, when nations are falling apart. We have this provision of him 
scent of God. Come back to verse 2, Psalm 91. I will say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. There's a power, guys, in you saying that, yeah? You say it. I will say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress. Do we say that? It's not enough to think it. It's not enough to agree with it, okay? I want us to say this stuff. You need to say this stuff. I will say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Can we say that together as a group now? Yeah. I will say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. There's a power in confession and saying these things out loud. We internalize, we're so privatistic and and locked up in our rooms and our own ways and thoughts and don't want to be heard or say, any, say anything out loud. We've got to break out of that stuff, yeah? Remember what the Lord says himself at the end? When he calls out to me, yeah, I will answer him. When do you call out? Or do we just internalize stuff and say nothing? Come on, man, there's got to be a cry. There's got to be a calling out, yeah? There's going to be times that you're going to have to cry out. There's going to be times you're going to have to call out to him that he can answer you so he can answer you. Let that cry come out. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. In this world, you'll have tribulation, yeah? There's no escape. <laughs> He will be there with you in your trouble. That is a promise. The promise is he'll be with you, and the other promise is there will be trouble. Yeah? <laughs> Amen. There will be trouble, and it's okay. He is there because you are abiding with him, you are dwelling with him. You will not fear the arrow that flies by day. Yeah? You will not fear the pestilence, the calamity. So a thousand may fall at your side. No harm will come near you. How are we going? All good? Well, you know you have to learn not to trust. When you're a child, you trust, don't you? But we get big, we get older, we get wise, so-called, and we stop trusting. But we've got to come back. Let's come back to this amazing psalm. And it's not just some polished, floral um, example of uh, some literary work that um, is ethereal and, and is meaningless is a, a song of you know just a nice piece of poetry that's been inserted in scripture this is the reality of who God is you can see it you can read every line through this psalm and see well this reference is who God is, right back to the Garden of Eden, it references God in Deuteronomy, it references all his promises through Psalms and right through the Gospels into Revelation. This abiding, can we take that word with us this week and muse on it, meditate on it and go, God, what do you mean by this? What is abide? I want to abide. I need to abide. Again, like I said, you won't hear this spoken of in the world. It's one of the few words I've ever heard used by anybody in the world. It's a spiritual word. Can we abide this week in him? Yeah, not just this week. Can we go beyond seven days? 
the Lord is. His word does. This is an eternal reality of who God is. So can we pray? And can we just put our hands on our hearts and go, God, right now, we want to come back to this Psalm 91. Lord, your word is absolutely perfect. It's the reality of who you are. We thank you for your encouragement today. We thank you for reminding us again. May Psalm 91, Lord, be entrenched. May it be may it become part of us. May the word become flesh. May we live this. Lord, forgive us, Lord, for not dwelling under your shelter. Forgive us for not abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Forgive us for not saying you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. May we be those who say these words, Lord, to you regularly. May we make this our confession regularly. Lord, not as a, an, an outward work, but as an inward reality, a depth, a cry that would come out from us. May we declare to you regularly, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. We thank you for the, prov- the promises of deliverance, Lord, in this psalm, um, from snares, from deadly plagues. We thank you that you cover us with your feathers. We thank you that your wings will give us refuge. We thank you that it's your faithfulness that is a shield and a rampart, a wall of security around us. That we won't fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day, the pestilence that stalks in the darkness or the calamity that destroys at noon. Even though we're taken into to calamitous times, those thousands fall at our right hand, no harm will come near us. We're not to be afraid, Lord, of the end or any calamity that comes. Thank you that you command angels to protect us. that you've got us, you haven't forgotten us. And because we love you, you will deliver us. Because we know your name, you will protect us. That we will call out to you and we will be answered by you. Lord, that's a promise. It's so precious. Thank you, Lord, for this provision, Lord, of of this precious psalm. We thank you for long life. We thank you with the satisfaction of seeing your salvation. Lord, may everybody in this room today and those watching Lord come to the fullness the full benefit of this psalm may we come into the fullness may we repent of withholding and and stop running when this provision is is there daily for us we come back to that most precious grace, this gift, Lord, of coming to you and abiding with you. Help us, Lord. Help our unbelief, Lord. Wash us, forgive us. Cleanse us, Lord, from self-sufficiency and running, Lord, for answers and help elsewhere. May we come back to your word. May we come back to Psalm 91 again, Lord. I bless each one, Lord. I bless the children. I bless the teenagers are blessed, the young adults, the 
the middle-aged, the mature Lord. May we come back to this childlike trusting and abiding again, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.